In this HVACR training video, we're going over pressure transducers and we're applying pressure to the bottom of the transducer and we're measuring the output with our multimeter. So we're going over the operation and also the testing. And make sure to check out our new book on inverter mini splits and we go over the electrical operation of all the components inside. We go over the refrigerant related practices and a lot of the questions that you may have concerning these systems. So check this out in the full outline over at acservicetech.com in the mini split tab. Pressure transducers are typically found in VRF systems, that's variable refrigerant flow systems, and they're typically in commercial or, or light commercial applications. So pressure transducers measure the pressure and directly convert it into an electrical signal that's sent to the circuit board so that the circuit board has real-time data to make decisions on the refrigerant flow within the system. And so on smaller systems, such as inverter mini splits, which are found in residential or light commercial applications, they may use thermistors, and these are used to provide real-time data to the system uh, circuit board in order to know the temperature of the refrigerant flowing through or near the tube, this tube thermistor, at any point in time. The thing is, these thermistors change the electrical resistance through the wire and therefore changes the electrical signal that's sent from the circuit board and back to the circuit board. And the pressure transducer has an output wire and that is providing the data from the pressure converted to a voltage signal in order to tell the circuit board what pressure is at that location. Now let's add our pressure to the end and adjust the pressure while we're measuring our voltage. I cut the wire short so that you can see it and so we can take our measurements, but we have three wires in the pressure transducer. We have a red, a green, and a black. So we're gonna be powering this pressure transducer with the required voltage of five volts as direct current on the red and the black wires with this phone charging cube. And as you can see right here, it says five volts as the direct current output. And we're gonna be measuring our output wire right here from our pressure transducer. We're gonna be measuring that as we're adjusting the pressure down here. Now we have 4.8 volts powering the pressure transducer and we have no pressure applied. And we can then measure our voltage between the black ground wire and our green wire. And at zero pressure, we're in millivolts. So we're measuring 504 millivolts. Now let's add some pressure. Now we're gonna increase the pressure to about say 50 PSI with our nitrogen. And so this is a nitrogen tank and we have our nitrogen regulator. And here is our output pressure. So 50 PSI, that's going in and we increase the, the voltage to 0.78, we'll say. And so now let's increase the pressure to 100 PSI and now we're at one volt. And so as we increase the pressure, we're gonna increase the voltage as well. Now this pressure transducer is a zero to 500 PSI pressure transducer. I just happen to have this one, so that's why we're using it. But you may run into zero to 750 PSI pressure transducers on R14A systems or R32 systems, because that'll handle from the lowest pressure to what would be the highest pressure. And so now, as you see, we're at, uh, say, 350, we're at 2.9 volts. We can increase to, say, 400, and we're at 3.5. And you can see our gauge is, is not really uh, working properly. But, so I think it's getting stuck because I have it resting on the table right now. And so we have about 500 PSI, which is the max pressure that this pressure transducer uh, is able to monitor. And so we're maxed out. So we have 4.8 coming in on the red wire, and now we have 4.8 coming out on the, on the green. So that's the voltage present at that location due to the pressure. And so now what we'll do is I'm gonna take this pressure off of this, and let's just close this valve down here. And now we're back down to our millivolt reading. So what you want to do is you want to compare the voltage on the output wire against the calibration measurements for the specific pressure transducer and system that you're working on in order to, to know if this is still functioning properly. It could be giving a incorrect uh, voltage measurement indicating a different pressure than what's actually uh, reading in the system, or you could have a cut wire or something like that that may be adding electrical resistance to the mechanism. Uh, so it could also just fail. 
And so now what I, what I wanna do is I wanna cut this open and just take a look at what's inside. So here we have this bottom section, the body cut off, and this is the uh, brass section where the pressure attachment would, would be connected at. And here you have your ceramic section. And so I still have this power with five volts. And what I'm gonna do now is I will just adjust this uh, probe over to here and I'm gonna press in with my finger. I'm just gonna apply pressure at the bottom here. And so you can see this as I apply pressure to the end of the ceramic disc, which by the way, this disc is uh, basically resistant to alcohol and acids and the refrigerant oil from affecting uh, the sensing material on the inside. Just turn the power off over there. You can see we're actually draining the power out of it right now and so our power is off. So here you see your flexible circuitry, and you can see your ceramic section right here. There's a front piece that we're gonna cut off, and you might be able to, to make out the shadow line in there, but we're gonna cut this off so you can see inside. And those three terminals right there extend to these three terminals that connect to your wiring harness. So we crack this plate off, and we have a capacitive sensor with the two opposing plates. You could also have a piezo-resistive type uh, pressure transducer. So there's a couple ways to make a pressure transducer, but basically as far as us technicians are concerned, we're just measuring the voltage that is applied to the sensor and the output voltage to determine the pressure at the port. Now, what you're also gonna do is you're gonna be measuring the pressure at the location where the pressure transducer is installed. So you need to compare that to the output voltage on your signal wire. And if you want to learn more about mini split systems and all the electrical components inside, make sure to check out our inverter mini split operation and service procedures book. This is available over at our website at acservicetech.com in the mini split tab. Also make sure to check out some of the mini split install and service videos linked down in the description section below. And hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.